This will be a review of the physical exam with some of the major things that the provider might be looking for during the exam. We will do it uh, body part by body part or body system by body system. And uh, as they are called out, I will describe for you what the things are that we typically will look for that the scribe should be aware of and uh, be prepared to record. H-E-N-T, head, ear, nose, throat. So with the head exam, the physician will be looking at the shape of the head. In most cases, this will be what we call normocephalic. It's usually built into the template, but there are some other head shapes and sizes that sometimes will warrant comment. Uh, with the uh, ear exam, the physician will use the otoscope and will be looking in each of the ears. And usually there will be a description of the outer ear, if there is anything abnormal with the, what's called pinna of the ear. And it has um, different parts to the ear. The pinna uh, is the lower part. There's a tragus, which is the little part over here. And then the whole thing is called the external ear. Then when they look inside of the ear, they're looking in what's called the ear canal. They use a speculum. This is a plastic speculum that goes on. And they will be looking at any abnormalities of the canal. And then they can see on the inside the TM or the tympanic membrane. So you may get a description of debris in the canal, swelling of the canal. You could have a, uh, a red TM, tympanic membrane. It would be called an erythematous TM. It could be bulging. It could be perforated if it has a hole in it. In trauma, they will be looking for what's called hemotympanum, that is blood behind the eardrum. So those are some of the major descriptors of the ear. Uh, the nose, they, will, they could be looking inside the nose for any swelling, rhinorrhea, which is a runny nose. You could have some uh, purulent drainage. If you have bleeding there, epistaxis, they may describe the bleeding is coming from a very vascular portion of the nose, which is on the septal surface. The septum is the midline, the divider between the right and the left. That area is called Kieselbeck's plexus, so you could have bleeding from Kieselbeck's plexus. They may describe anterior epistaxis or posterior epistaxis. And then they'll have the patient open up their mouth, and they will describe, it could be the tonsils, could be the soft palate. The uvula is the little thing that hangs down in the middle uh, with the pizza pizza guy from Little Caesars where that's kind of wagging. Uh, you could have uvular edema. You could have exudates, which is white patches uh, on the tonsils or anywhere else in the pharynx. So that's called the oropharynx back in, in the back that they're looking at. Then there's also the dental structure in the mouth. That could be described. Many patients will come in with dental complaints. They may describe the gums, the gingiva, so you could have gingivitis. And the, um, the teeth are numbered from the right backmost tooth across to the left backmost tooth on the upper, on the maxillary surface. And then you drop down on the left, and the numbering continues from the left back tooth or molar uh, on the mandibular surface and comes back around to the right. So on the top, you start at one, tooth number one, and then you get to tooth number 16. Those are the wisdom teeth, one and 16. You drop down to the wisdom tooth 17, and then you come across all the way to 32 as the last tooth on the bottom. That's the numbering system. Eye? The eye exam, um, Frequently, if it's just a general quick eye exam, you may say the, see the physician just kind of look. They can even tell just when the patient blinks a little bit about the eye. The eye has several parts to it that we're looking at. The white part is called the sclera. The sclera may be red, in which case the physician may say that the sclera or conjunctiva, which is the covering over that, is inject, injected. So you may hear conjunctival injection. It may be yellowish in somebody who has a liver problem with an elevated bilirubin, and that's called scleral icterus. They may be looking at the eye shape, uh, the pupil shape. It could be irregular. Uh, they could have what's called anisocoria. Uh, that's an irregularity of the eye. 
and they will follow the patient's eye movements, and sometimes they may say, look up this way, down, across, and up, and that's checking what we call the EOMs, or extraocular movements. Also, they can either, just when the patient blinks, they can tell, or sometimes they may use a light to tell, do the pupils react? So there is what um, is usually written as P-E-R-L, pupils equal reaction to light. And um, sometimes it's with an A at the end in accommodation, but usually it's just P-E-R-L, pupils equal and reactive to light. Uh, those would be the main things that we're looking at with the eye. Sometimes with the lid, you may hear a description of some lid abnormalities. They could have a sty. They could have something called a horiolum. Those are some more um, terms that you might hear.